Tonight on KGW News, impasse in Portland Public Schools. Today was disappointing for us, but most importantly for our students and families. The sticking points that could lead teachers to walk off the job. Plus, the warning for dog owners after one ended up overdosing on fentanyl. Definitely gonna make sure I'm looking out for my dog now walking on the street. Then later. Come on, little guy. Rescue on the Oregon coast as a couple helps a shark back into the sea. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm David Molka. We begin tonight with two major developments for Oregon's largest school district. We'll get to why teachers in Portland are now one step closer to a strike in just a moment. But first to a new effort to prevent gun violence and to protect students and spectators when it comes to high school sports. Catherine Cook was there this evening as they tried out some new tech at a football game. Catherine. David, the screening system looks like a metal detector, but it's specifically programmed to expose any weapons someone might have on them. It's part of a bigger effort on the district's part to prevent gun violence after several shootings last year. <laughs> Outside McDaniel High School Friday night, getting into the football game took a little longer than usual. It was pretty good. It was pretty easy, like nothing hard, like nothing intimidating. Everyone had to walk through these open gate pillars. It was it was fine. It was kind of like going through to a Blazers game, but, but a little lower key. It's a system used to detect weapons, specifically firearms. We're looking for what we consider mass casualty threat. So we're not looking for the Swiss Army knife. Last year, there were two shootings outside Jefferson High School, one outside Franklin and another outside Cleveland. The district's safety and security task force presented several recommendations, including this one. What we hope happens first is that people know we're doing it as a deterrent. PPS Athletics Director Marshall Haskins says feedback they get on this test run will play a big part in deciding how to move forward. He hopes it's clear why they're doing this. We're not saying your kids are criminal because you're coming to a game. We're saying we want you to come to the game and feel safe. I mean, I'm really comfortable with it. And, you know, when we go into other events, we've had to do other things and we just adjust with the times. Portland Public Schools is testing the system for just one game. They're also gauging how people feel about it. It's kind of a normal thing now. Keeps me safe, especially a lot of crazy things going on, so I don't mind it. If the district likes how it works, they might consider creating a pilot program. That would include more weapon screenings at more sporting events at possibly more schools. Always hoping it makes a difference. And the weapons detectors retail for around $17,000, but the one they used tonight was just on loan for this game. If the district moves forward with a pilot program and beyond, they'll meet with the board and the superintendent to plan how it would all work. David. Catherine Cook reporting tonight. Thanks so much, Catherine. Well, developing tonight, teachers in the Portland Public School District have declared an impasse in contract negotiations. That put the state's largest school district one step closer to a strike. Teachers say they are fighting for salaries that keep up with inflation, more planning time, and additional support to help with students' mental and behavioral health. The union says they declared an impasse today because after eight months of negotiations, they don't feel like the district believes or understands their needs. The district says the union has been unwilling to budge on key points, including their demand for a 23% raise over the course of a new contract, along with hard classroom size caps. Now, here is the president of the union, followed by a district representative. We love working with our students. We love working with our community. We love working with our colleagues. But working under Portland Public Schools in these conditions is close to unbearable. Literally, we've had educators share that. Despite our frustration, we continue to keep our students at the center and will strive for compromise. Our students do not deserve this inaction in the face of potential school closures. So what is next? Each side set to come back with their final offers in the next week. If there is still no agreement, that would be followed by what is called a 30 day cooling off period. That all means the earliest teachers could strike would be October 23rd. Both sides say they will continue to negotiate and they already have three more meetings on the schedule.
Let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now. Power is starting to come back on in northwest Portland. An outage left over 10,000 people in the dark for about four hours. PGE says animal contact, their words, knocked out electricity around 630 this evening. This is video from the Pearl with traffic and street lights out across much of the northwest. It turned intersections into four way stops and forced restaurants and bars to close their doors in the middle of the Friday evening rush. Right now, only about 100 customers are still without power. Portland leaders are going to start offering businesses a tax break if they sign a new lease in the central city. They're hoping to bring more office workers back. Businesses downtown in the Lloyd District and Lower Albina can all apply. They have to sign at least a four year lease and they can get part of their business licensing tax waived. And more than 3 million potentially lethal doses of fentanyl are now off the streets after a major bust by the Westside Interagency Narcotics Team. They were tipped off. A large shipment was on its way from California. And when the suspect's vehicle was spotted in downtown Portland, officers searched it. They found 40,000 fentanyl pills and 18 pounds of powdered fentanyl. Street value altogether some $600,000. One man was arrested. He now faces a federal count of possession with intent to distribute. Meanwhile, Portland's fentanyl crisis is not only affecting people ingesting or smoking the drug, but really anybody sharing the sidewalks. And now that includes pets. Local veterinarians at Dove Lewis Veterinary Emergency Hospital say in just the past few weeks, they have treated three dogs who overdosed on fentanyl. They say at least one ingested the drug either off the sidewalk or through bodily fluids left behind by someone who smoked it. Just really, uh, really scary to hear that that's happened three times. I might have to carry some Narcan in my pocket going out, taking the dog out. Wow, yes, vets confirm Narcan does work on dogs. Symptoms of an overdose, by the way, in pets could include a change in breathing patterns, difficulty walking, and seizures. New at 11, the staff of a coffee shop held a demonstration in North Portland today saying they were all let go from their jobs. This is the Wonderwood Springs coffee shop on Lombard. Artist Mike Bennett, who's known for his character drawings that started popping up around the city during the pandemic, is buying that shop. His art's been on display there since last year. Now, staff says they were given two weeks notice that the shop would be closing for at least two weeks while the ownership changed. And during that time, they would not be paid. They were told they need to reapply if they wanted to return. We're not only trying to find new positions, but we're also trying to cope with the emotional loss of a community and a safe space and somewhere that we've loved to work and love to be at. In a statement, Bennett said the current owners of the shop offered their workers a variety of employment and transitional support. He added that he wanted to ensure, quote, every person would be aligned with the new direction of the business. You're watching KGW News and straight ahead at 11 shark rescue on the Oregon coast where this guy was spotted and how a concerned couple helped get him on his way. Plus fancy footwork and passing like the pros. It is Friday night football, so put your feet up because Orlando and team, they've got it all figured out. And we don't get a lot of nights where it's t-shirt weather during Friday night football in high school football season in Oregon, but tonight was one of them. Still 73 degrees out there right now. The weekend will be warm, but not quite as warm. We'll talk about those weird chances for rain on Wednesday. And if you're going down the valley for the Ducks and the Beavers, the forecast looks great for both games. It's going to be clear all day long. It'll be warm, but not as warm as today. We'll have your forecast after the break.